Hi, and welcome to the Cisco Identity Services Engine and TC NAC Cognitive Threat Analysis VOD. This VOD illustrates the integration of ICE 2.2 and CTA using STIX technology to quarantine CTA incidents based on ICE course of action rules as defined in the ICE authorization policy. Cisco Cognitive Threat Analysis CTA is a cloud-based service that analyzes WSA telemetry data in order to detect breaches on the network by automatically detecting command and control channels and other evidence of an active infection and is able to track individual campaigns and attackers. The Cisco Web Security Appliance, WSA, is a web-based threat protection solution and sends the telemetry data to the CTA account for behavior analysis. The Cisco Identity Service Engine, ICE, is an identity access solution and integrates with the CTA cloud instance via Taxier Sticks, which is a standard for exchanging cyber threat information. ICE receives these CTA incidents and is able to take ANC adaptive network control mitigation actions on the endpoint by issuing course of action authorization policies. In this example, an end user downloads some adware, CTA analyzes the incident from the WSA and deems this as a potentially unwanted application. ICE receives this incident in Taxine Sticks format and quarantines the endpoint by assigning a security group tag to it. Here a user runs a piece of malware on their system. It's from a script file. This downloads files from rp.comocolor.com. The Cognitive Threat Analysis dashboard provides a global view of the incidents, confirmed malware threats, and device configurations throughout the organization. This screen displays a health status risk of 4. This is the overall potential risk of the detected malware. Higher numbers 7 and 9 are generally reserved for malware such as ransomware that have a greater harm potential, while lower numbers could include unwanted applications, botnets performing click forward operations, adware, or Tor applications. As we drill into the endpoint 192.168.11, we see the activity of the malware connecting to the domain. Here we see more activity, the URL for downloading the malware and being run from a curl script on the endpoint. Let's go back to the dashboard and select malicious content distribution. This view provides details on the incident detected across the organization, such as the infected users, the first date seen, and the duration of the attack. This helps identify the spread of malware throughout the organization. Let's get back to the main dashboard. Let's select confirmed. Here we see a description of the threat, adware install core, and a confidence rating of 100%. This confidence rating refers to how certain the system is that this incident belongs to the assigned category. The global statistics of the threat represent behavior similarity across the whole customer base. Under infection history, we see the number of users that are exhibiting malicious behavior and malicious web requests. Under global intelligence and threat grid, a lookup is made to Cisco AM Threat Grid to get context of other files that utilize the same method of attack. This report gives confidence as which files are likely to be found on the system and provides insight into what the attack may do. Under the Compromised Host Context Visibility screen, we see the impact level of the incident along with the associated course of action events. These course of action events, monitoring, internal blocking and eradication are defined as ICE authorization condition rules and are used in an ICE authorization policy for quarantining the endpoint or limiting network access. Also under threats we receive the incident possibly unwanted application. Under threat severity we see the impact level of discouraging and then we also see the course of action policy as well. The ICE authorization policy defines the course of action that is taken when a CTA incident occurs. Note the course of action condition rules. These are or together because the incident is tied directly to the course of action event and this policy serves as a bucket to quarantine all CTA incidents. Please note that the EPS session quarantine condition rule has no value in this use case. The goal of this policy was to assign a security group tag of quarantine system regardless of how the endpoint was quarantined. Under Radius Live Logs, we see the quarantined endpoints.
Here's where we define the Stix taxi settings from the CTA Cloud instance. In the CTA adapter configuration, set the impact qualification setting to insignificant so ICE can attain all the CTA incidents. ICE also contains a TCNAC threat summary report. Here we drill down into the endpoint and receive the ICE details. Here we drill down into the endpoint and receive the CTA incident details. This is the sticks information that gets added in ICE. In this example, CTA ICE2 has already been defined in our ICE instance. The username and password will automatically be generated in CTA when adding the sticks account. The WSA is added as a device account and the WSA logs are uploaded every 10 minutes to the CTA Cloud Instance for analysis. Here are the device details from the CTA Cloud Instance that need to be added to the WSA. On the WSA, you'll want to configure a log subscription for the CTA Cloud Instance. Provide the WSA device configuration details generated from the CTA Cloud Instance.